Hey there, this is Real Talk Baseball. I'm Carlos Baseball, and with me as always is Will Power and Tony Snap in the special edition of Fantasy Baseball. We've talked about pitchers, catchers, and first basemen, and now we're moving on to one of my favorite positions. But before we go and say what position this is, we are going to give you the top three at this position, and we're going to go ahead and start with Tony. So, Tony, give me your best pick at the top for second basemen for Fantasy Baseball. Well, I think we can both uh, agree that uh, DJ LeMahieu is the number one second baseman overall. Um, he's just pretty solid everywhere, uh, and then he's with New York. You know that the ball the ball flies out there. So uh, yeah, he's my number one overall. Uh, we spoke about him last week. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know what. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we did talk about him a lot last week. Uh, we yeah. Yeah, we did just because he was part of our first baseman's also just because he's eligible at first base. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with Tony. Uh, I have DJ LeMayhew number one. And I think everyone that really understands fantasy baseball and baseball in general can also agree with uh, with our pick. Um, it, it's so crazy how second base has changed so much just over the last few seasons. You know, five years ago, DJ LeMayhew, like he was definitely on like the top 10, but now we're picking him number one. So <laughs> and, and, and what's even crazier about that is he's 32 years old now. So we're picking a 32-year-old, number one, when he was 27, he was more like maybe like number eight or number nine. Uh, part of it was because of the, the Coors Field effect before. But now that we've seen him at, at two different stadiums and still doing the same thing, he even increased his power a little bit. Got his little, uh, little manpower now. I guess uh, <laughs> the older age, it, it's helping him out a little bit. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. Hey, yeah, yeah. So that's number one out of the top three, right? So you guys agreed with them, and Demetrio the, the was a good player. He, I mean, not was. He's still a good player. Uh, so if you guys don't mind, let's just go ahead and move on to number two. Um, and Will, I would want you to go first. And I think this is where it's going to get interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and sound this. Make this sound. Let's get it on. <laughs> go <ahead>. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, Will. <laughs> uh, number two, um, I got Ozzy Osby's man. Um, he's been very consistent in the last few years, and um, you know he had he had a, a good pedigree. He was really good in the minor leagues. Um, Braves have a solid team. He hits uh, in the top of the batting order, so he's definitely going to score a lot of runs. And uh, everyone that hits in, in front of him, um, you know they they also hit really good too. You got Ronald Acuna that's hitting before him, so he's going to score some RBIs. Uh, he'll probably end the season with over 100 runs scored and close to 100 RBI. And uh, I, he definitely increased his power over the past couple of years also. So um, that's something that's pretty excited to be about for uh, for Ozzy Albies. Yeah, and I'm seeing that he's been in, this, in the league for three years already. going to be the fourth year in 2021. And I've had him before in Fantasy Baseball, and he's really produced some good numbers. I yeah. I was kind of surprised that not a lot of people knew about who this guy was um, when I picked him back then. Now he's been, I mean, because of the playoffs and Acuna and everything, how, you know, they're, they're celebrating and all this stuff. I think he's... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, like you mentioned, he has a good batting average, a career, so 279, which is really good, right? So, I mean, not a bad pick. Tony, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm also going with Albies. Um, he's got a great supporting staff around him. The Braves are uh, definitely going to be looking to come back and, and um, you know, get, get back to the playoff race. And, and, you know, hopefully, I know in their minds, they're like a World Series bound, but um, they still got the Dodgers to look out for. So, uh, but yeah, he's he's um, definitely my number two. I, I like, uh, he has had some power, power you know, from a elite second baseman you expect around 20 25 home runs from them mm -hmm. and the past few years he, he's um been right right ar around that average yeah and that's exactly kind of what you want from the guy that's hitting number two or number three in the batting order yeah so hey. I, I really like the production from this guy yeah so, so are you guys looking at the rankings are you guys seeing that he's number six on the fantasy or am i correct or am i wrong looking at the wrong one um well, it depends I, on where you look Okay, so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I have might be uh, like, ESPN. like four different references that I huh? see, uh, okay. and Ozzy Albies ha was number two in all of them that I looked at. Nice. Okay, so I guess I'm looking at MLB rankings. Uh, uh, oh, not that's fantasy different. baseball. That, that's, that's because different. that's overall they take into account defense and yeah. Um, there, there's a oh, lot yeah. of other aspects. Yeah, got it. Okay, so I'll just look for another source. 
but that's a good pick though i i honestly like that pick i i don't i don't disagree with you at all like like i said he's really good in fantasy baseball um tony so that's number number two to, for you too or, or you have your own number two no yeah yeah he was my number two uh really? yeah he's 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 good man he's solid he's uh going on his fourth or fifth year now so mm -hmm. and um i don't i don't think we we've seen like any like regression you know it's ma yeah. mainly being uh, he's been solid his whole time with yeah the and he's still young and the braves man they're they're good I, I see them you know producing a lot of runs so. yeah definitely i mean they, they lost um osuna right marcel osuna uh that that was a a big uh power producer for the 2020 season uh, he's going to be really hard to replace. I don't think that there's anyone that can replace him. But another thing, too, is, I mean, the guy hit like 340, and he, I, I think he led the National League in home runs this past season. I believe and, so. Uh, yeah. And he, he, there's no way that he could be able to replicate that. This was his breakout season. He had an amazing season in 2020. Um, hitting 340 throughout the whole season that's almost unheard of the only person that i know that has done that in the past few seasons was 2017's jose altuve and we all know why he hit 340 that season <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so let's move on to number three who's you guys' top three and who wants to go first <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and go first tony <laughs> yeah well, um, my number three is uh, going to be Whit Merrifield. Okay. Um, I, I feel like he's been um, pretty consistent overall. Uh, I like his eligibility in the outfield as well. Um, that's a, that's actually a question that I had because I didn't see him play in the outfield at all this past season. So is he going to be available in the outfield? So that, that's actually one of the factors why I wasn't sure if I wanted to have him as my number three or not because I wasn't sure if he's going to be available in the outfield. Like we talked about last week, like position eligibility, like that's huge. It increases your value so much. So I, I don't know. Um, what, what website did you see that he's also available in, in the outfield? Um, just pretty much all of them. I'm, yeah. I, I think I think as long as the, it, it goes by two last two seasons. I think it goes, it goes by, by two last seasons? two. I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's why we still see like Cody Bellinger at first base. Him. Well, Cody Ballinger did play first uh, a, a few games last season. A few. Season. See, but like supposedly the criteria is like you have to play 10 games or, yeah. or like 12 games. Yeah. He definitely didn't yeah, play 12 know. games. No. I, I don't no. remember him seeing them that many. No, many. not at all. And if it was, it was probably like a quick one, two, three outing, you know? Yeah. And we yeah. don't even know uh, how like all these apps are really going to incorporate that into yeah. their eligibility just because the season was so short. It, it, and yeah. that's why I probably think that that it is going to be based on the past two seasons i hope so um but yeah i most of the websites i've seen um which was like uh like espn mm -hmm. has them at, as uh they also like you know just basic regular fantasy. fantasy pros fantasy pros has them eligible in, in both uh second base and outfield yeah so um yeah he's my number three he's just been consistent overall uh he gets you like 20 home runs uh, steals you about like 20 bags too. Um, he, he's uh, been really consistent. His average, you know, uh, I like him a lot, man. His his uh, average overall these past five years is almost 300. It's at 295 right now. Yeah. Um, and then he normally gets you about like, let's see. His yeah, but, well, he, well, he gets you a little bit less home runs, but he's I would say he's a lot more um, consistent with a. Uh, batting average and just gets on yeah. base a lot his home runs are, are averaging about like maybe around 10 to 15 you know um but in 2019 I, he played on 162 games man that's pretty cool so, I, yeah so <laughs> especially at his age yeah that's kind of unheard of it's kind of unheard of yeah and then of course he played the last season the 60 game so um that's not a bad pick tony i'm looking at it i'm looking at their batting average and on base percentage which is career three 342 like i mentioned earlier um but that's a really good pick and if he's eligible for outfield that's you're using kind of i mean i know you're using you use will's strategies right to 
and uh, you make it your yeah, own. Yeah, everybody like, should be using yeah. uh, the eligibility factor yeah. when it comes to fantasy. And and if well, Maryfield is primarily a second baseman anyway. Yeah, that's but if he has the eligibility, you can actually use him as an outfielder. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and get more points off of it. That's a really good pick. And and do you agree with that pick, Will? All right, so. I really like Whit Merrifield. I've, I've had him on a couple of my teams before. But mm-hmm. the problem that I have with him is he plays for the Royals. And the Royals are really... <laughs> I don't want to talk crap, man, but they're really crappy. Uh-oh. You know, like they, they just, they don't look good anymore. They're not the same team they were in 2015 when they won. And um, he, he is a, a really good source of batting average, which is really good in a points league. But in a categories league, which is what I usually play in, when you're when you have six different categories to produce in, he doesn't steal bases anymore. You know, he had one season where he stole 45 bases, but other than that, like it's just been declining uh, since then, since like three years ago. So I don't have him as my number three. If he was still stealing bases, I think that I would. Um, move him up in my rankings, my personal rankings. But for for number three, I have Cattell Marte. I know that 2020 wasn't really the best season for him. um, But if you look at seasons before that, let's see, in 2019, he batted 329 in 144 games. So he didn't play as many games as Whit Merrifield did. But I mean, 144 games, that's still really good with a 329 batting average. 389 on base percentage means he's probably striking out a lot. Um, he doesn't have the on-base percentage that I would like to see from him, but the power production is still there. Uh, 32 home runs in 2019. He only had two this past season. Now, maybe he just got off to a slow start because the season started late or what. I, I mean, like I said before, like I don't really look at individual players' stats as, as much in 2020 that I would in previous seasons. And I saw like a definite like increase in his ability and his stats uh from the time that he debuted in 2015 all the way up until 2019 so i i i definitely skipped a few players that um that other websites have ahead of Catal Marte, but Mm -hmm. i think that they're basing his ranking and and um you know his his stat production off of this 2020 season where I kind of, I don't really throw it away, but I don't give it as much value as I do as previous seasons. So I'm going to tell Marte number three. Nice. And yeah, it's, I mean, the 2020 season, uh, it was like, it's, it was, I guess it was a down year. That's what you want to say, I guess. His but batting average was, was okay. Yeah. It went down to 287. Yeah. Uh, two home runs on the season. That's, that's, that's really bad. scary. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> You, you don't really know what was going on with the guy. He, maybe he had like some of what of an injury, so he wasn't, uh, you know, getting the the power swing as he was the year before. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he's still really young, twenty six years old, and that's one of the things that I don't really like about Merrifield. Also, is he's already in his thirties. He debuted really late. Um, I, I think he debuted when he was like twenty seven or twenty eight. So you know, now he's already in his like thirty two or thirty three age season. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's really hard to trust a guy once they get a little bit older, which was what my problem was with um, um, Abreu. Abreu, Jose Abreu. Oh, oh, we don't start that. One. <laughs> <laughs> I um, knew it. <laughs> it age yeah. plays a factor. You know, it. I guess it helps Merrifield a little bit just because he's he plays in American League. But usually, like when you have a DH. Those are the guys that are the power producers that are going to hit 40 home runs, not Merrifield that's probably going to hit maybe 10 to 15. I think Merrifield, actually, he increased his power this past season, right? Um, I think it went probably, up a little just bit. Because of the, just because of the low games and how many home runs he had. Oh, he had yeah. nine home runs. Yeah, which is good. Nine home runs in 60 games, whereas the year before, he only had 16, and that was a full season. Yeah. You know, so he indefinitely increased his pop, but... um. I, I, I still don't trust him, man. He's going to be 32 next season. Um, depending yeah. on if he plays outfield, it's really going to be tiring on him. Second base is probably going to be a little a little easier for him to give him a little bit of a break. But um, that's one of the reasons why I don't really see him running anymore. I think it's just because age is starting to get to him and the yeah. legs just aren't the same. Oh, man, you said that, that he's going to be relaxing at second base. I don't know, man. I think second base is one of the top toughest positions to play, dude. Like, Well, what I mean is he's not 
<laughs> I know. Running. He's not going to be running as much in, like if he would in the outfield. I, 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 exactly. I, yeah. So he's definitely <laughs> going to need like those uh, the reaction, right, mm-hmm. to be able to get to a ball that's that's hit left or right or whatever. Um, it, it's a very skilled position, but it's not as tiring as being a center fielder, which is what he's played before. Oh. That's another debate, man. (laughs) All right, Mr. Infielder. Exactly. I played infield, and I I, I always say second base was the toughest position to play. Um, It's hard to read the ball. Exactly. Not only that, but, like, the hardest play for me in baseball, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it, is when you run in and you have to throw behind you to throw the first. That's the hardest play to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So when you you Exactly. You have to throw behind you. Even when you're doing a double play, you gotta throw. Yo, under, be, under, yeah, right? you still gotta. That's so, that's one of the reasons why Chase Utley is known as one of the greatest second basemen, just because exactly. of the, the plays that he was able to do. Yeah. So when you say that, <laughs> not, <laughs> keep in mind, it hit home. Keep huh? mind. It hit home. <laughs> yeah, it, it hit me right here, man. Ow. <laughs> no, but I, I, I get you. I get you. It's uh, it's the, the age is a, it's a big factor. Reaction time and everything for yeah. for this player. And Tony, do you agree with uh, Will's pick? Like, I think uh, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, I mean, I I picked up um, be, like personally for for Marte, I would rather have like Biggio or uh, Brandon Lowe or yeah. See, like you know, Brandon Lowe and and, and uh, Kevin Biggio, they're ranked ahead of Patel Marte, but. I haven't seen enough of those guys. Like like the same thing we said about Pete Alonso last week. Yeah. You know? yeah. I haven't seen enough of those guys to really like move them up in, in my personal rankings that much. I understand why a lot of people, I understand why you have them ahead of Cattell Marte. But yeah. Cattell Marte has five years of experience where those guys only have two, two. years of experience. Yeah. 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 yeah but see, like what, what I also would pick them over Marte was just because who's around them, you know, the, the type of team that they have. Yeah, I, I, I feel like uh, Arizona is kind of on, on a decline, whereas opposed to, you know, the Blue Jays are definitely going up, you you, yeah. you, you know, and um, also with Tampa Bay, they're up, you know, they, they were former U, uh, World Series uh, contenders. So um, I, I had those guys ranked up above uh, Marte, so I don't really ag- agree with Will. I, I do agree that, like, he's uh, definitely top 10, but um, he's not in... I can't. He, I think he just misses out on my top five, probably six or seven. And what round uh, does he me. go, though? What round does he go? Uh, he goes number eighty-one overall. So <laughs> exactly. By, <laughs> by that by twelve. Like, yeah. That's what, like round seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that's not bad. I mean, that's not. Uh, and and you know what? I haven't. And that's the thing with Whit Merrifield because Whit Merrifield is also he's going number thirty-nine overall. You know, and that's round yeah. four. And for a guy that doesn't hit home runs, That's I don't soon. want to take him that early. Yeah, but uh, you know what, man? He gets on base. Um, he has been um, maybe a, a little uh, shy on, on the gun when it comes to stealing bases. But um, I, I don't, I don't see that slowing him down. You know, maybe uh, we, we that, saw the uptick in in, in uh, home runs, like you said yeah, earlier. Yeah, exactly. You know, see, so that's that's kind of what gives me like a little more. Um, like uh, willingness to draft this guy yeah. uh, because of the power production that he yeah. had this past season. Nine home runs in 60 games. That's not bad at yeah. all. And I feel like the Royals are going to be solid, man. They, they really have like a veteran staff behind them. You know, Merrifield, like you said, they're gaining up in age. All right. Well, so does Salvador Perez. 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 Yeah. yeah. And um, and then that, now they added uh, Carlos Santana. I feel yeah. like he's a great uh, first baseman, man. And uh, he's got pop. Um, I, I feel like they're going to be all right. Uh, as, as opposed to, you know, um, Arizona, you know, I I, I feel like. Uh, but the see, like another here. thing that I was thinking also is though both of those guys are very valuable uh, trading chips that both of those teams could use to yeah. start their rebuild. Arizona mm-hmm. definitely has to rebuild after they traded Granky and uh, Go- and Goldschmidt away. It was pretty much like they're like pretty much like just giving up. You know, they they got some decent guys, you know, on their roster. Um, Christian Walker. Um, I think they they did they still have Starling Marte? No, he no he they got a, it, Marte's the with a with the Marlins yeah with the Marlins. So yeah, yeah. I, it all it all depends too on what division they're playing too now, right? I mean they're going to be facing two pitching staffs on that 
That's true. Yeah, and the Royals, yeah. uh, the Dodgers, and and the Padres have the yeah, number see? one and number two uh, pitching staff in all of baseball. So yeah. that's yeah. another thing that, Marte... I, that I didn't think about. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't agree. Number three. Uh oh, let's get it on. <laughs> Just start it, baby. <laughs> <That's laughs> hey, but okay. So you you said uh, Marte will go in round seven. So okay, uh, it's, uh, it's not it's not a bad a bad round. See, and that's about the time that I would like to take my second baseman also. Yeah, okay. I and that's my question. Make, and that's my Lemay question. Is so. the only one that I wouldn't mind taking him at, at his ADP, which is number 27. It's the yeah. beginning of round three. So okay. I, I would love to get LeMahieu at the beginning of round three. But all yeah. these other guys, Ozzy Albies, number 31 overall. I, I I could I understand why he's at 31. I would actually take him probably around that time. Um okay. But these other guys, uh, Whit Merrifield and Brandon Lau, I think they're. I, I haven't seen enough of them to draft them that early. Okay, so before we move on, like I want to ask, it, it's the second baseman uh, position that you want to pick the beginning of the rounds. I know they're ranked, right? But are they one of those positions that you don't have enough second basements, or you have enough second basements where you can hold on to to the end round to the? I think that. Um, the the second basements that you can get kind of like in the the early to mid rounds uh, more like like round nine and round 10 they're not that different from the guys that you can get in like round 12 and round 13 so i wouldn't mind waiting for a second baseman that i can get later on especially because um i can get someone else around that same round that's going to produce a lot better than these guys okay you tony um, yeah, I agree with Will. Um, I'm probably, I, a, a lot of these positions, I, I prefer to try to go for the elite players. So I, I really like dive in really, um, so, and, and, um, to be honest, there's not a, a lot of elite second basements, you know, exactly. there, there's only like a, a handful, if not just maybe three. Um, so I, I would be going for like LeMahieu or Ozzy Albies. Yeah, I, um, I, and I mean, like, other than those two, like I, I wouldn't consider anyone elite. I mean, I'm, actually, LeMahieu would really be, be the only one that I consider elite. These other guys are really good, but I think LeMahieu is just a step above yeah. all those. Well, other not guys. like elite overall, just the lead in the position. In the I position. mean, you can't really go off of like overall. Uh, I mean, Albies in the top 10 as players, you know, elite. I, I would say um, LeMahieu is like a top 10 player, you know. Um, just because his versatility overall, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I could see him going in the first rounds, you know, late late first rounds. Uh, but uh, to be honest, I would probably be waiting, not not as far as Will, as mm -hmm. um, I would probably be going like at round six or seven, just because I feel more comfortable with those the player names around there. Um, but I agree with Will, like once you start going into like round ten and twelve. All those guys are pretty much interchangeable amongst themselves you know like uh there's uh max muncie there's yeah, uh exactly uh, mcneil uh jonathan villar you know a lot of those guys you could just you know um they're, they're, they're all pretty much the same uh yeah, they'll get they're, you the same they're definitely gonna produce for you yeah so so if you miss out on the second baseman definitely start thinking about maybe uh round 10 you know but uh i i personally i i like going for like elite players where, where you can just set them and forget them you know just put them there and you don't even have to think about it and and lemayhew and albies are those players to me thank you guys and there you have it that's the top three second basements for your fantasy baseball tune in for the next show as we go for comeback player bus player and the sleepers so go ahead and tune in to the next show which is we deliver to you on wednesday I'm Carlos Baseball. This is Will Power and Tony Snap. Real Talk Baseball, signing out.